impression that uh, this uh, attacks will continue uh, from your talks after this meeting. And this also leads to my next question, which is, um, have you received a promise or a, um, a promise about receiving any uh, military jets from the US or any country from the West uh, to continue uh, your struggle against uh, in this war? Thank you. No, we did not discuss uh, military supplies uh, to, to Ukraine. Uh, upon my initiative, we dedicated most of the time to uh, addressing humanitarian issues on the ground because I believe this is the, uh, it is the utmost priority for diplomacy to bring relief to everyone who is suffering. And I appealed to Minister Lavrov in the most constructive way, though it was not easy for me all the time to listen to what he was saying, uh, but I appealed to him a number of times uh, with the request to address urgently the humanitarian issues. Um, when it comes to the first part of the question, my impression is that Russia is uh, uh, not in a position at this point to establish a ceasefire. They seek uh, a surrender from Ukraine. This is not what they are going to get. Ukraine is strong. Ukraine is fighting. Ukraine uh, made Russian, plan, Russian initial plans fail. We are ready to seek balanced diplomatic solutions to put an end to this war, but we will not surrender. Mr. Kaleba, Tom Bateman at the BBC, thank you very much for doing this. Can I ask you first about the issue of a 24-hour ceasefire? You said there that Mr. Lavrov was not in a position or was not the decision maker, but that he would go uh, and ask the question. Do you have any confidence there can now be a 24-hour ceasefire? And can I ask you about the wider issues? Because we know that uh, Mr. Peskov, for example, was saying that the fighting, the, the invasion will stop uh, if there is uh, a commitment by Ukraine not to join NATO, to recognize the regions in the East as independent. Was there any discussion? Did the Russians ask you about these wider issues? And are you prepared to make any concessions on those? Uh, no, Minister Lavrov said that all of these issues should be discussed on a different track, uh, the so-called Be Belarus talks and uh, he did not go into details on this issue, but the, broader, the broad narrative that he, uh, uh, that he conveyed to me is uh, that uh, they will continue their aggression until uh, Ukraine uh, meets their demands. And the list of those demands is a surrender, and this is why, it's not, uh, uh, why it is not acceptable to us. Um, the last thing I want today is to kill hope, to kill hope in the civilians who suffer from Russian air raids, bombardments, and the behavior of, uh, and the, the, the killings committed by uh, Russian army on the ground. <clears throat> I shared with uh, Minister Lavrov one, one episode in the hope that uh, he would respond to it in constructively based on simple human values and respect for human life um, about the murder of, of, a, of a civilian who was driving in a car, he made a wrong turn and was immediately shot by the Russian soldier firing from a gun machine. These things must be stopped. These are the war crimes and everyone involved in them uh, will bear responsibility, eventually. I hope, I sincerely hope, that Minister Lavrov will follow up today's conversations with his colleagues in the Russian government, in the Russian army, and they will hear the plea of civilians, thousands of civilians, on whose behalf I spoke with him today and help 
arrange a safe passage for them uh, from the besieged cities, first and foremost from Mariupol, as well as to provide, uh, to allow the provision of humanitarian aid to Mariupol. Next question goes to Reuters, please. Mr. Minister, thank you. Um, Ukraine's leadership has talked about pursuing some non-NATO models to resolve the conflict if it receives certain security guarantees. Um, during your meeting with uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov, did any uh, issues about Ukraine's status come up? Um, and secondly, um, did Ms. Minister Lavrov set out any red lines, such as insisting Ukraine disarms or recognizes Russian sovereignty in, in, in the Donbass region during your talks? And what did you respond to this? Thank you very much. He mentioned uh, it very briefly without going into discussion again. He insists that these issues should be discussed uh, between two uh, delegations in what is called the Belarus, the Belarus talks. Uh, I said on, openly to him that, in my view, foreign ministers are invested with the powers to discuss any kind of issues and to seek uh, all necessary solutions. However, it seems that he has a different impression about the role of a foreign minister uh, in, this, in this crisis. So we did not uh, engage into a specific discussion on this matter. Next is uh, Ukrainform. Olga Budnik, Ukrainform. Pane Ministre, Hen Director Magate, may namir prayikhate na Antalyski Forum. Chi mati mate vez nim zustrich i vzagali na zustrich i z Lavrovim. Chi shla mova pro bezpeku jadernih objektiv i chi prodovje Rusija pogrožovate svojo jadernoju knopkoju. Так, наприкінці зустрічі міністр Лавров порушив тему ядерної безпеки. Я, він хоче провести, чи ж він висловився на користь проведення тристоронніх консультацій між експертами МАГАТЕ, українськими та російськими ядерниками. Я відповів йому, що до приходу російських солдат на територію України все було в порядку з нашими ядерними об'єктами, з нашими атомними електростанціями. Вони функціонували надійно, і Україна взагалі завжди була і є відповідальним учасником всіх механізмів верифікації МАГАТЕ та договору про нерозповсюдження ядерної зброї. Всі ці, вся ця брехня, яку вони розповсюджують про те, що вони знайшли в Україні якісь там сліди розробки ядерної зброї, це просто брехня. Жоден міжнародний орган, жодна міжнародна інспекція нічого подібного ніколи не бачила, тому що нічого такого в Україні не відбувалося. Тому найкраще, що може зробити зараз Росія, це вивести своїх солдатів з території Чорнобиля, з території Запорізької атомної електростанції, дозволити персоналу їх обслуговувати відповідним чином, а експертам МАГАТЕ відвідати їх та контролювати, щоб все було нормально. Будь-які посягання на суверенну владу України на її території, яка стосується ядерних об'єктів, є неприпустимими. І якщо будь-яка модель, якщо хтось буде нам нав'язувати модель, за якою ми маємо визнати якесь тимчасове управління в тій чи іншій формі росіянами нашими ядерними об'єктами, то ми це відкинемо, тому що це так не працює. Коротко кажучи, Росія має демілітаризувати ядерні об'єкти, які вона зараз намагається контролювати, і відмовитися від будь-яких атак і спроб захоплення інших ядерних об'єктів або об'єктів газової інфраструктури, до речі, те ж саме, тому що вони можуть поставити під сумнів функціонування ГТС, захоплюючи окремі її вузли. Ми відкриті до розмови, ми відкриті до розмови з МАГАТЕ, але на тих принципах, які я позначив. The next question goes to France 24. Uh, hi, Ludovic de Foucault, France 24. Thank you very much for doing this. Uh, again, on the uh, humanitarian level, because I understand this was really the focus of uh, the meeting on your part, what concrete steps uh, do you expect Russia uh, to take uh, in the next few days? What was your um, concrete demands and uh, what do you expect? Did, do you think that Mr. Lavrov was able to commit 
himself to take to, uh, uh, concrete steps in order to, uh, uh, to ease the humanitarian situation. Thank you. In the meeting, I made a very simple proposal. I said, we all have our smartphones with us. Well, probably Minister Lavrov has his last iPhone, but that's, that's another story. And I said, I can call my officials right away, my president, my prime minister, my commander in chief, and I give you 100% that they will provide all assurances that humanitarian corridors will work. I'm ready to do it right now, right here, in your presence. Can you do the same? Can you make the call? I'm sure you have all of them in the phone book. He did not respond to that. But I still hope that out of humanitarian considerations, he will follow up our conversation by reaching out to his colleagues in charge uh, who can make decisions in this, in this field. Again, we came to these meetings with different assumptions. I came as a foreign minister who is entrusted to seek solutions and make decisions. He, as he said, came to listen. This is the difference, the difference uh, in, in approaches. I was ready to make all necessary calls right away to arrange a humanitarian corridor from Mariupol. I proposed it. My uh, proposal was not, uh, was not followed by, uh, was not supported by Minister Lavrov, but again, I still hope that at least he will do it after leaving the room of negotiations. Okay, we have time for the last question. Please, uh, Daily Sabah. Mr. Minister, uh, the ruling party in Ukraine raised a new proposal, a security agreement in which Turkey and the United States could be uh, guarantor countries. What is your view on the issue and was this issue raised during the trilateral meeting? Thank you. No, we did not discuss this issue during the trilateral meeting, though I was ready to do it, but uh, Minister Lavrov had no interest in discussing it. Uh, again, he referred to this, uh, these kind of issues to the Belarusian track uh, of talks between two working groups. The idea that you refer to is very simple. <clears throat> yes, it is written in our constitution and it has been consistent part of our, our it has been our consistent policy to eventually join NATO as a full member and enjoy security guarantees provided by the NATO Charter, North Atlantic Charter. However, we understand that this is not going to happen in a blink of an eye, not even if in a foreseeable future. We also see from the reaction of NATO as an alliance to the Russian aggression against Ukraine that NATO is not ready to act collectively to stop uh, the war and protect civilians in Ukraine from uh, Russian air raids. It delegated the authority to help to member states to do it on a bilateral basis. This poses a question. What is how to ensure security of Ukraine between now and the eventual membership in NATO? This is the question. Uh, what my constitution says something, and I cannot speak against my constitution. But if we could reach an agreement where a uh, similar system of guarantees as envisaged by the North Atlantic Charter could be granted to Ukraine by permanent members of the UN Security Council, including Russia, of course, by Turkey as a big friend and neighboring country, by all our neighbors, uh, this is something that we are, ready, we are ready to discuss. This is the idea. The war is happening now. Ukraine exists in a security vacuum. We have to think creatively on how to address this issue and uh, ensure our security. So far, uh, it's our army that ensures our security. It's the people of Ukraine who are sacrificing themselves to ensure security of our country. And it's a list of partners, including Turkey, who are helping us with that. But this has to be put on a systemic, sustainable basis. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Uh, stay safe. All the best.